This is a review of my Pedego City commuter after 5 years and 13,000 kilometers. It was March 2015. I walked into an electric bicycle store in Ottawa, which I won't name to protect the innocent. Let's call it Utopian e-bikes. I didn't know anything about e-bikes except that they have a limited range. I asked for a good quality electric bike that I could use for long rides. I wanted a comfortable bike that could replace my car during the cycling season. I wanted an e-bike powerful enough to climb up steep hills and with enough range to take me from my home in Gatineau to the Ilmer Marina and back, which is about 50 kilometers. So, Utopian e-bikes sold me a Pedego City commuter, a wonderful bike that promised to be a lot of fun, as the Pedego publicity said. The cost was $4,345. The reason why it's so expensive is because of the weak Canadian dollar, which is worth only about seven-tenths of a U.S. dollar, and because of the 13% sales tax. This is my Pedego City commuter. I bought the model with the 48-volt hub motor in the rear wheel and the 15-amp battery located in the baggage rack. It has a step-through frame, full fenders, mud flats, chain guard, and a kickstand. It has mechanical disc brakes, that is the brakes that work with a cable as opposed to hydraulic brakes. The LCD controller offers a speedometer, five levels of assistance, an odometer, a trip meter, and readouts for trip time, maximum speed, level of assist, and power consumption. A very nice feature is a twist control throttle, which enables me to ride without pedaling if I feel like taking a break. We had an early spring that year and I immediately started using my e-bike. A few weeks later, with only 686 kilometers on the odometer, the shifter, which was a twist type, broke. I liked the way it worked when it did work, but Pedego had a lot of them breaking and they switched to a different type of shifter. Utopian e-bikes was very accommodating and they replaced it on warranty at no cost to me, with a Shimano thumb and index shifter that works very well and that has survived so far 12,300 kilometers. I had to replace its cable once, but that's just normal wear. That summer, I went on a six-day bicycle camping trip to the Laurentians with my city commuter and my burly trailer for hauling my camping equipment. Then in August, having accumulated 2,620 kilometers, I noticed that the battery sleeve had broken away from the supporting rack. Utopian e-bikes ordered the new one and replaced it on warranty. The bike came with a headlight attached to the fork and a tail light which is incorporated into the battery. Neither is powerful enough to be of use. Near the end of the first summer, after 4,100 kilometers, the headlight bracket broke, but because the light was so inefficient, I didn't even bother to replace it. I bought a third-party light instead. After I returned from my Laurentian trip, disaster happened. The frame broke at both points where the battery rack is welded to the rear fork. This was very serious. Utopian assured me that this is a very rare occurrence, only one in a 5,000 chance. It was covered by the warranty. Because Pedigo had made some changes in their frame, they couldn't replace the frame alone. They replaced almost the entire bike. The only original parts are the handlebars, the brake levers, the front wheel, the battery and the saddle. Then in November, after a further 434 kilometers, the new battery sleeve also broke. This was my fourth battery sleeve. It became obvious to me that there was a serious design flaw. The battery support is a vitally important component of the bike. Then came winter and I had to put the bike away. Then comes 2016 and I'm planning another bicycle camping trip. I don't trust the Pedigo because it had spent so much time in the bicycle shop 
So at the end of June, I bought a second e-bike, a Bosch Tube Touring. For this second season, I built a cargo trailer equipped with a 100 watt solar panel to be used as a range extender. This is when I discovered that the Bosch can't be run on a solar panel because of its patented computer system. So I got the special connector for the Pedigo battery. I was going on a six day camping trip with the solar trailer using the Pedigo. Nothing broke that year, touch wood. I did have a problem though with the LCD controller. When the solar panel was charging the battery, the motor would cut out once in a while. I never found out the cause, but I suspect that it was due to a defect in the LCD controller. I did notice though, that sometimes I'd go on a long ride and the odometer would only record about half of the actual distance. I think this was another sign there was a problem with the LCD controller. So, in the end, 2016 was a good year. Nothing broke on the Pedigo. Then came 2017, my third season. It was June and I got another shocking surprise. This second frame had broken in the very same place as the first one where the battery rack joins the rear fork. It was a bit more than two years since I had bought the bike. Technically, the warranty period was over. Welding the aluminum frame would require removing all the wires from the frame, a very laborious and costly job, and then the weld would never be as strong as the original. I took the bike to Utopian e-bikes to see what they would suggest. The owner got back to me a few days later with a pleasant surprise. Pedigo would replace the frame on warranty. The only condition was that I have to pay for the labor involved in transferring the components from the broken bicycle to the new frame. The labor cost turned out to be $480. I didn't expect this cost after only 7,883 kilometers, but it was better than having to buy a new bike. I never got an explanation from Pedigo as to why the frame kept on braking. I knew there had to be a connection between the braking frames and the braking battery sleeves. Whenever I went over a bump, the 9 pound battery would rattle loudly. The sleeve rested on four little pillars fitted with pressed in nuts and these were held onto the battery rack with four little screws from underneath. A pressed in nut isn't meant to withstand being pulled hard from underneath. My theory is that with every bump the vibration acted like a percussion hammer hitting the sleeve from underneath, pulling it away from the metal support and cracking the little plastic pillars. Somehow, Pedigo engineers had never figured out that Preston nuts can't withstand upward forces of a 9-pound battery. This here is an example of what I think is a proper use for a Preston nut. This is the little post that holds my 2-ounce mirror in place. When I received my e-bike with a new frame, I noticed that the design of the sleeve had changed. It was still mounted on the same metal rack and it still rested on four little pillars, but instead of pressed in nuts, this new sleeve had a hole through each pillar with a hexagonal depression for a nut on the bottom of the inside of the sleeve. I was reassured because even though it's still under designed in my opinion, I think there's a better chance that the sleeve won't break and that would mean no more broken frames. Now I had a good bike and nothing more could go wrong, or so I thought. That same summer I built my Barrio bicycle camper, but chose to do my trip to Toronto with my Bosch Cube instead of with the Pedigo just in case. Now we're in 2018. In view of the problems I had with my bicycle frame, in April I decided to examine my daughter's Pedigo. She had the same bike except that hers was the 360 watt hour battery instead of the 720 watt hour battery. So hers isn't as heavy as mine is. We went for a ride together and I found that her battery like mine with the old style of battery sleeve rattled very loudly whenever she rode on rough roads or hit a bump. A sure sign that this was pu putting a stress on the four little pillars that hold her battery in place. 
Listen to that noise. Lo and behold, I discovered that one of the pillars was cracked. She had only 3,000 kilometers on the bike, and her frame was still intact. So before she broke her frame, I bought a new battery sleeve for her bike, which cost me $149.46, including taxes and shipping. I had to pay the shipping because this was a special order from California. I wanted to get the sleeve before her birthday, and Utopian eBikes wasn't going to be ordering anything else from Pedigo for an undetermined period of time. I had to pay the $50 shipping fee. Then in June, the LCD controller on my bike stopped working. This isn't the original controller, this is the one that came with the first replacement frame. This controller had lasted only 6,500 kilometers. It uh, couldn't be repaired, so I had to buy a new one, $221. This summer, I had a maintenance job to do as well. I replaced the rear cassette and chain, but of course, that's just normal wear. I don't count that as a, a breakdown. Now it was 2019. I was starting my fifth season. It was early April when I went on a bike ride. In the middle of my ride, something odd happened. The pedals would turn, but the bike wouldn't move without the motor. So I had to ride back home 15 kilometers with throttle only. So back to Utopian e-bikes. They told me they were very busy, so I'd have to leave the bike with them for a few days. A week later, I phoned to find out what was wrong with the bike. They hadn't had time to look at it yet because one of their mechanics had quit without warning and they were very busy because this was the busiest time of the year. It was another week before I called back to be given the bad news. They had to order a part from Pedigo, a part that fits between the motor and the cassette. The cassette is the type that you can see in this picture. That was bad news because a special order from Pedigo in California takes two weeks to reach Ottawa. Two weeks later, when the mechanic opened up the motor to install the part, he noticed that the motor's gears were stripped. This isn't the original motor, if you recall. It's the one that came with the first replacement frame. So there were only 8,200 kilometers on this motor. To my great relief, Pedigo offered to replace the motor and the wheel, because they come together, on warranty, even though it was four years since I bought the original bike. I would have to pay only the dealer's labor for the diagnosis and installation. But I'd have to wait two more weeks. Two and a half weeks later, I was back on the phone to find out why nobody had called me. More bad news. The owner of the store told me that he had mistakenly ordered the 36 volt motor instead of the 48 volt motor. So I had to wait until the new one would come in from California. Finally, on June 14th, I got my bike back with a new motor. It cost me $225 for the labor. If the mechanic had discovered that the motor was damaged right from the beginning, all he would have had to do was to swap the old wheel with the new one. All told, the bike was in the shop for 53 days. Thank goodness I had a second bike to fall back on. The lesson here is that if you live in Eastern Canada and buy a Pedigo, you need to buy a second bike as a backup. The bright side of this story is that Pedigo backs its products with a great warranty. I really didn't expect them to replace the motor after a little more than four years. But I think Pedigo should take the issue of parts more seriously. Shipping from California is very expensive, so Pedigo should have a warehouse in Canada. It shouldn't take two weeks to get a part. When I had my screen printing business, I bought special ink from an outfit in California. Shipping took only four or five days, and that included the time to go through customs. This is a recapitulation of the component failures. 
You can freeze the video if you want to examine it in detail. If I were to sell the bike today, this is what I could tell the prospective buyer. I could tell him that he's buying a really good bike because there's only 5,000 kilometers on the frame, the battery, and the sleeve. Uh, there's only 3,000 kilometers on the LCD controller and the motor is almost new with only 1,200 kilometers on it. I wouldn't want to discourage current Pedigo owners. I think that my experience was probably not typical of Pedigo quality on the whole. If all their bikes were that bad, they would have gone out of business a long time ago. The major cause of failure, the battery sleeve, has been redesigned and probably solved the problem of breaking frames. I would have expected, however, the motor and LCD controller to last much longer, but the fact that Pedigo replaced them long after the warranty was over tells me that those were probably rare failures. They couldn't afford to do that for all their bikes. One thing I should mention is that the tires that came with the bike are very good. In 13,000 kilometers, I've had only one flat tire. I replaced the rear tire at 11,000 kilometers as a precaution, because it was still good. And the front tire, which is the original, still has a lot of wear left on it. So here is a summary of my 13,000 kilometer review. First, I'll start with the positives. It's fun to ride, and it's a very comfortable bike. It has a comfortable saddle, and it has comfortable leather handle grips that I like. It has a powerful motor, it has excellent battery life, it has very good tires, and it has really an exceptional warranty. Now for the negatives. It's expensive. For half the price, you could buy a similar bike, a Rad City electric commuter. The lights, they're so weak that they're useless. For me, it's been very unreliable. Then there's the problem of availability of parts in Eastern Canada. And finally, uh, in Ottawa, the service delays were just unacceptably long. Now, would I buy another Pedigo? I'll let you decide on that. I hope you found this review interesting. If you'd like to watch more videos about e-bikes and bicycle trailers, see my website, www.robertberio.com. Thanks for watching and never quit cycling.